yeah, hi, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome back. And um, uh, yesterday, uh, we have uh, some of you uh, have trouble to use FileZilla. <laughs> I think uh, at least for one account, um, I tested, and uh, I think that's uh, uh, Galaxy 11. So I believe the password uh, was modified. So if you log in to the web interface of Galaxy and uh, you change the, your password, so when you use uh, FileZilla for FTP, you should use the uh, whatever the password you change to. So it means the old password uh, won't work after you change it to a new password. So it basically means the FTP uh, connection and uh, login authorization is uh, synchronized with the Galaxy Web Interface login. Okay, so uh, yesterday, uh, we stopped, uh, like, uh, uh, when we tried to run some uh, quality control. And uh, I think uh, today we will start from here and uh, then continue to the RNA analysis. So, so far, uh, any questions about uh, yesterday's workshop? So everybody seems okay. Okay, so uh, let's uh, uh, go to the Galaxy uh, web interface now. So we will start from the uh, step two. And uh, I think uh, in day one slide, uh, let's see whether I can figure out uh, page number 26. And um, let me open my blotter. Okay, so after uh, you log in to the to Galaxy Web Interface and uh, do following first uh, create a, a new history, doing create a new, and uh, then you can rename this uh, as uh, anything you want uh, and. I call quality control alignment. And um, so the first thing to do, we copy one data set from uh, our workshop data set history. So we are going to use that uh, to run the quality control. Then based on the quality control result, uh, we are going to run the trimmer. So after we have a good quality sequence rate, we are going to perform a sequence alignment uh, using Baltic program. So after that, uh, we are going to say the, um, to the summary of the alignment result, we are going to use a PCAR, a PCAR program for, for, for it. So the first thing we will do is copy the uh, data set uh, to my QC alignment history. So the source history uh, as we, uh, we tried yesterday and the uh, source history is the workshop data set. Uh, suppose it's uh, already copied to your uh, history yesterday. So select the uh, data set tool and uh, it's called uh, read QC that fast Q. Then destination history, I'm going to use my QC alignment as my destination. So after this done, click on the copy history items. So once the uh, data is copied, finished, uh, copy, then we will see on the top, there's a showing one data set copied to one history. We click on here. So it will bring me to my QC alignment uh, history. Okay. 
So from here, the first thing uh, we will try is the uh, is do the groomer. And uh, yesterday, and uh, we talk about it, the fast queue, uh, the quality as cut code used can be different. So we wanted to make them all like a fast queue Sanger standard. So how to do that? And we are going to use the groomer. So under the tools selection, I'm going to search where is my uh, groomer located. So there is a program called FastQ Groomer. Click on this one. So then the, you know the each program, uh, there is the parameter setting. So you can change to, uh, for example, from the input, no matter what the, the quality score used there, you can convert to Solasa, to Illumina, to the one you prefer. But for alignment, we use Sanger. And so it means the parameter setting for each program in Galaxy, similar to the command line, there is you can modify the parameter setting based on the interface provided feature. And also there is, you may want to show advanced option, but we don't need that. So we go ahead uh, to execute. Uh, usually, you know, the, in Galaxy, the default setting for the program uh, usually works well for majority cases. And so you need to modify some parameter settings only in the cases you need to fit your kind of project goal. And uh, I'm not sure whether we have enough time to go through the uh, pick column step. Uh, for example, in pick a column program, they recommend to keep the sequence read uh, unique identified mapped to a genome. So, but uh, in both uh, in our Galaxy web interface, so the setting is can allow the read align to multiple place. So if we want to use that for the peak calling process, so we are going to change that to allow the multiple setting, change the to the only allow unique read map to one location in the genome. So this is done with the groomer, so we can go ahead to run the, uh, to run the fast QC. So still I type in here, found uh, where it is located. So the groom, the data is my input for the program. Again, so I'm going to click on the execute, then the program will start. So as you can see, once we submit is a gray color, it means the program is waiting to run. Once it start running, become on yellow. Yellow means the program is running and the process our data. Green is finished. So after finish, we can click on the, this I logo to see what kind of result we have here. So basically the critical thing, usually at least I will exam is the say the quality score. So usually as we uh, talk about the years they are uh, in the slide summary, uh, we wanted the average score about 28. So as you can see, the, we have some um, um, location, like the uh, first 10 basis is the uh, kind of average below 28. And so even this area, you know, the looks maybe still okay because some people may lose um, a little bit of standard and they may want to use 
25 or 20. So basically here is the um, uh, kind of the um, between green and the pink is kind of the average good area. But for our case, we want to use the area above the 28. So next step, we wanted to trim the sequence read the first 10 base pair away because that's the low quality score reason. So another thing that usually I look at is the ATCG distribution. So the ATCG distribution at the beginning flux execute um, not stable, like a uniform distributed. So still around like 11, and uh, I may want to trim those um, bases away. And uh, other things that people will look at is uh, uh, something like the whether there's an adapter uh, sequence and um, is uh, present in the sequence rate. And also there's a duplication level. So this kind of the, um, uh, give you an idea how good your uh, sequence uh, rate is. But uh, for our case, we will go ahead to trim the low quality region uh, from uh, our sequence rate. So we can try is the, so look like ATCG is the first 11. Look like uh, not uniform and also the quality score is kind of low. So we are going to use the trimmer to trim the uh, those uh, regions from uh, the sequence rate. So from here, and uh, then we use the fast Q trimmer. So it's uh, allowed to uh, trim five and and the three and. So first thing I do is still select the input is our groom, the fast Q. And then I'm going to trim, uh, I think either 10, 11 or 12, it's up to you. you because we only have 50 base pairs there. So you may want to try to limit the, you can go to maximum like 12 to be safe, or you can go to 10 and the remove majority of the locality. So I'm going to try 11. So, so there is a default setting. Do you want to keep rate with zero lines? You can either change to yes or no, but you know, obviously, zero lines won't give any information. So I will still keep the default, then do the execute. So this will remove the low quality region away from the sequence uh, uh, read. So after this, after we trim low sequence read away, uh, the reason away, we can go ahead to run the alignment uh, program. And, um, but if you want, you can rerun the quality control fast QC to make sure the reason you want to trim the really removed from your sequence read. So you can also the visualize the result based on the one sequence record to see. Froze. Yeah, it's everybody, so I think she froze. All right, bear with us. If you're having some tech, technical difficulties, uh, please bear with us as uh, we hung we connects.
Okay, there she is. It disappeared. Yeah, I don't know because uh, uh, you know the uh, my home network, AT and T, no service. I have to use my uh, my cell phone to. Yeah, you mentioned that. Um, that's why I was getting I was on the call. Um, yeah, you can go pick up where you left off. Um, I'll just pause this. Take it. Well, it's it's recording regardless. So. Uh, it, it's still recording now. Yeah. Okay. So okay. the. Oh. Uh, Me uh, fix the settings. Okay. All right. There you go. Okay, now I'm back. Yeah, thank you, hello. Okay, so the, um, uh, so we stop at here. So as you can see, we can see the data from here. And then if you compare to the data before we trim, so you can see the, it started with uh, NACA. So it basically we removed the first 11 uh, base pair from the each sequence rate. So after that, so what we are going to do is we are going to, we can go ahead and run the Bowtie program. So, so here. Can I, can I, so we can do this over and over again to check as to when, when the sequences are removed. Can we go and check? and do it, rerun it uh, till we are satisfied with the fact that it does not remove too many bases or it removes certain amount of bases? Yeah, uh, it won't remove more because the program <laughs> works well. Yeah, but uh, the thing, uh, you are thinking the, uh, you know that you can rerun the fast QC mm -hmm. and then the last rerun it and then you see how Okay, so yeah, so we, yeah. Uh, that's what I was getting to is that we we can do that rather quickly to check how many bases to remove. Yeah, yeah. So let's do that. So initially we have uh, the fifty base. Yes, pair, it's a very short. Right. Thing. So yes. we remove the eleven. Theoretically, we should have thirty nine. So let's try that. So we do the we run fast QC again. Yeah, it's kind of the. Okay, so now it's back. So this time we are going to run on the data set four, right? Because mm -hmm. it's uh, trimmed. So let's do this and do the submission. So it's kind of the interface uh, uh, kind of uh, slow by the. That's a, a little bit patient, and it will work. Okay, so now we have the result. Let us uh, review it. So I click on view data. Okay. Okay, so let's say you see the before, uh, there is the to check here about uh, per basis sequence quality before it was a kind of warning sign is the right color now change to the green okay. and uh, so we come to here as you can see 
the from the zero theoretically to go to 39 now and um, so let's remove this to the okay so yeah it come to 39 mm -hmm. right so it so, uh, looks you know all about 28 now so we got the first 11 away with uh, with uh, uh, low quality score one yeah it makes sense yes it makes sense so I, 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 I obviously um, uh, would you show us the alignments with untrimmed and trimmed uh, uh, sequences? And I'm going to show the alignment uh, with the trimmed sequence rate. Okay. And uh, but uh, you can run your own okay. and uh, using untrimmed. You know the it may influence the alignment uh, rate a little bit. Yeah. So. Uh, you, you can try to compare the two results yeah. afterward. Sure. Yeah, so it follows the same procedure, just change the input, then compare result. Mm -hmm. So now let's go to the Bowtie program and uh, then, so we might, you know, in some cases uh, and um, you know the majority of sequence alignment program. So for example, and um, we want to cover it in our workshop. And um, for the people, you know, the for the quality control, they may notice that there are a lot of adapter sequence yes. and reach, right? So they may go ahead using the program can remove the adapter sequence. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's necessary to remove it, but in some cases, uh, even you do not remove it, you may get the alignment program run perfectly. Why? Mm -hmm. some, pro some alignment program can automatically detect some adapter contamination, That's so right. we'll remove that. Yeah. So. To be safe, this is simply is the, just introduce the logic and uh, what needed to be considered during the sequence analysis. And uh, but some step you may be able to skip if the downstream program can take care of some quality part. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so that's the, okay. But for our case, uh, we will, I will use this one. Basically, I want to, to show you how to use this step-by-step. Uh, -step. We are going to build the workflow. And um, how do we build the workflow based on step-step program we run? So once we have a workflow, we don't need to repeat uh, this mm -hmm. one by one. So all we need to, to submit a workflow, then the workflow will take care of all this for us. So for the Bowtie, and then we are going, because this is the, uh, from the, this is human sample, we are going to change the reference genome to HG19. And uh, so make sure select the reference genome from the default you change to HG19. If you forgot to change it, basically you won't get any read aligned to a wrong genome. So we have the, is this library mid paired is a single and uh, sequence read. So then under FASTQ, we choose the data for that uh, we already remove the low quality away. So under body setting, there you know the body program has a lot of parameter setting. So based on your need, you can modify it anyway. But uh, by default, Galaxy just pre-configured common use the parameter setting for the program. 
But if you need to change it, and you click on setting to use from the common to full parameter list, then the all the parameter you can modify it will be show up. But for our case, we will go ahead to run our bot alignment. So as you see, this is the program we submit through the um, uh, Hoffman SGE and um, curing system. So once it's gray, it means it's still waiting, then it should become yellow. But the, sometimes the, because this come like a, a two or three layer, one is we submit through our Galaxy Web interface in our head node. This one will go to the SDE curing system, then go to our computing node. So behind it, we have the storage box. There is some synchronization issue. So sometimes the Galaxy will lose the track. So it just lost track. We won't lost our, our job or the program we run or result at all. Gradually, it will be um, back. And um, because we, we set up the auto system to uh, get the system job back, but for our case, then I just manually start this, then we can see the job running. So once I stop the service and we will lost the, you will lost the connection to uh, Galaxy interface uh, for like uh, a few seconds. So don't worry about that. It will be back soon. You just need to refresh the browser. So just wait for a few seconds and um, so it will take a few seconds to get it back. So you see, once I stop it, there's an error showing. So uh, no need to uh, worry about that. Once this happens, uh, you know it's going to come back maybe after 10 or 15 seconds. Uh, let me wait for a little bit. And uh, when the Galaxy start, it start a lot of program and the service. So it take uh, like 10, 50 seconds to boot. So as you can see in here, I already have my uh, bot result back. And um, so the bot had output the default format is the same. And uh, so next step uh, we are going sorry, to do. I, yeah. Sorry, I have a question. So do we have to do all of that stuff that you just did? Or if we wait, will it auto automatically eventually run and, and complete? It, yeah, it's automatically wrong. Okay, so we don't have to do all that stuff you just no, did. No, 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 you okay. don't need to do that. This is basically is the our system issue. And um, I think the once we put the, the curing job system in a kind of static for some period, it's defined by the Hoffman part. Somehow Galaxy will lose the connection to that. But if we keep it active all the time, the connection is always there. So it is not your issue. It's basically it's a system that will take care of that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So the uh, the thing is the we have this one. Then the uh, let me start uh, with the so this we basically have a two step of the quality evaluation. One is the quality control we did. That will give us an idea whether there is a contamination and whether the sequence reader has kind of the 
really low quality part. But even we have uh, everything is looks good from the quality control. It is still it doesn't mean the sequence read is right. So for example, if during the library preparation there is a contamination with the bacteria, so we sequence the bacteria. Although all this sequence read are all perfect. But when we try to align to genome, we basically won't see the contaminated library aligned to the genome, right? So in that case, basically, we need to tell how many are read really aligned to the genome. So we use the PCART program to get information. So after we type in the PCART in keyword, there is one program called SAM BAM Alignment Summary Matrix. So we click on this program. So this will program will tell us, for example, we have a thousand sequence read in our input. How many really aligned to the genome I selected? So in here, so this is the number six is my bottom output. Then there is some citing the output file title. So still the P card uh, recognized that we used the HG19 for the alignment. So in here, P card asks uh, whether the input file is already sorted or not. So in our case, the bottom output is not sorted. So we change it from yes to no. So if you don't change that, the program PCAD will give error message. It doesn't recognize because it's not sorted. So once we change from yes to no, then I'm going to submit the job. What does sorted mean here? And uh, then the, uh, the program, when they process the read, you know, they may sort based on the chromosome, based okay. on the chromosome location of your sequence read aligned to. You know, the sort, of, for example, uh, we have 10 read aligned to the mm -hmm. chromosome one, right? Yeah. So one may be in chromosome location from the uh, chromosome one start with 20 to 49 or, or 69, right? That's one read aligned to. Then the second, the read may be aligned to the uh, 1000 to 1049. And then, the, but this 100 read aligned to the location may be not follow 1, 2, 3 to 100. So it might be arranged to the um, 5, 10, 1, something. So sort means it's a one to short the location first then do the measurement. So the bow tie output is not sorted? Uh, bow tie, this one is not sorted. You can try. Uh, if you don't change from yes to no, then the PCAD uh, program will complain. The input is not sorted. OK. Yeah. And uh, but uh, it's possible, and um, there, there can be alignment program is the output is already sorted, so okay. then you can use the default. But in any case, if you try the PCAD program, initially you select yes sorted, then the program exit with error, with complaint saying input is not sorted, then you just rerun it, but change from yes to no. OK, thank you. Yeah. So from this P card alignment summary, then we can see the our input how many got aligned to the HG19. So the P card output contains a number of information. 
So the under category, they have the total rate. So it means how many input rate I can turn, how many pass the filter, percentage of rate pass the filter, and also the noisy rate. So where do you get the definition of this output? So under each program, the bottom basically contain kind of a help page or information page. So for example, let me back to the input for the PCARD program. So if you scroll down, so after the execute uh, bar, you will see usually the program will give a summary then they will tell you the what this program in general will perform. And also there is kind of the link to the, this program documentation. This not only apply to PCAR, the pretty much majority of the tools in study in Galaxy follow the same format. So if we keep going scroll down, then it will give the input of what should it be. And then the, the bottom will define the output result of what it look like. And then give the definition, the output uh, from the PCAR program, what each definition about. So for example, there is a PF read. So what does it mean, the number of the read where as passing Illumina filter. And so there is a definition for each category. So now let's go back to our output from our PCAT alignment. So we can come to here to say, this is the total, the sequence rate we have is uh, 37,992. So, we got 100% pass the filter and the zero noisy read. But then this is the number really aligned to our human genome, HG19. So then we got the percentage. So we basically got 86% of our input aligned to the genome. So it is good. So. Back to my slide, I gave a little bit of the information the, uh, how people usually used to, uh, to decide whether, uh, whether, so one we already talked about, we want the quality score above 28, and then uh, let's go here first. So we already, so from the alignment summary, basically we want to see if we have a mapping rate over 80%, then it's good, it's well accepted and no issue. But if it's about 60% uh, is acceptable and we can still use that. But if less than 20, we will talk, think about it quite possible, the sequence read we received also passed the quality control fast QC, but it might be contaminated with other genome. It's, that's why it couldn't align to the genome we wanted to land to. And uh, so this is uh, why we need to after alignment, we want to get a summary result. Uh, another case, you know, the, uh, it depends on the program uh, you use. Some program like BWA, and um, you, you can see in the end of the alignment, it uh, already have a summary report. So that summary report in general will contain the mapping rate already. So if you have it already, that's you don't need to run PCART anymore. But if you don't have that information, it's recommended to run, to run it. So, okay, so we used the, the trimmer to remove the, 
low sequence, uh, uh, low quality region from our sequence reach using the fast Q trimmer. So that's based on the 5N or 3N. But then there is uh, there are another two program installed in Galaxy. One is uh, Sickle. So Sickle is um, it's a sliding window based. So it's basically try to keep uh, as many base, bases uh, as possible. So instead of uh, cut off 10 or 11 all away, but uh, there are some sequence rate, maybe low quality reading is uh, just a three base pair, but you don't want to trim 11 away. So in that case, you may choose to use SQL program. Another one is called the SIS, is the adapter trimmer. So if you feel you have a lot of adapter enriched in your sequence reach based on the fast QC output, then you may choose to use the SIS program to remove them. So total we have three uh, for the uh, to remove the, uh, to clean up the sequence rate. So for the alignment program, um, we tried the bot time, but we have a, a few alignment program available in Galaxy. Uh, one is BWA. Um, BWA is usually used uh, for the DNA project. For example, if you work on the SNP identification, usually it starts with BWA alignment program. And um, then for RNA-seq um, analysis, uh, we use BOTAI or BOTAI2. And um, another two program is the top. Uh, top head and top head two. So this is the difference back end of top head and top head two alignment is either bot head or bot head two. But the on top of the alignment, the top head top head top head two also use includes the splice junction uh, into the program. So the usually uh, if the, you wanted to see the uh, your gene model, you use the top head, top head two or top head uh, for that purpose because it will give the splicing junction information. So, so this is the uh, about the quality controls. So now we did uh, a few things. So we have the our we we received the we we received the sequence uh, raw file from the facility. Then we upload them into the galaxy. Then we did the uh, groomer. Then we did the quality control. Then we did the alignment. So most times you may have multiple samples. Uh, you receive from the facility. So, you know, if you have uh, 10 files, do you need to click like, uh, for our case, how many times? Seven. Do you need to click 70 times to finish them all? Basically, it's uh, no. So the first thing after we run one sample or one data file to go through the alignment to the a pick up a summary, then whatever we performed in this history, under this history, we can do is to get the workflow from that. So if you click on this view icon, then you do the extract workflow. So then it will bring up a page like this way. So it will include, include everything we did under the current history. So I want to rename this, uh, give a name. Uh, I will say the QC alignment and the P card. So this tell me I did uh, uh, maybe add a groomer. 
So this will just the name will remind me this workflow contains the steps I did in this history. So I click workflow. So once I click workflow, where does it go? So the purpose is once we have workflow built up, so once you have a second data site and uh, you want to follow identical step as the what we did, then you simply all you need to do just change the input file. Then the workflow will take care of everything. For we don't need to click on Groomer anymore. We don't need to click on FastQC anymore. We don't need to click on Bot anymore. All we need to submit workflow. So once this, uh, we do that, it will be showing under the workflow selection. So I click on workflow selection. You can see the one I just uh, created and then renamed is uh, in here. So once we have a workflow, for example, uh, you want to change it. For example, we use the um, trimmer from 11 to first uh, five terminal 11 base pair of way. So the next data set you may see, I wanted to change to seven, 10 or 12. So we can do the edit this workflow. So once you click on the edit, you can see this is my input. Um, input I can change to any new data set. So I can see from the input, the first thing I did the groomer. So from here, I did the QC. So the, from the QC, I did the trimmer. So the I needed to move here a little bit. So this basically tell us uh, so after trim, we also rerun the, the QC and then from here. So for example, if we want to modify some parameter, what we need to do is, uh, uh, as you can see, whichever, for example, I come to here, click on fast cube trimmer, the left panel under detail will bring up whatever I can modify for that program. So like this record is because we did 11. So for example, I say I want to change to 10 for my next run, then I can change to 10. So after change, so I need to save to keep whatever I modified. So after this, and then once we have a new data set, I say I want to rerun this workflow. So click on workflow, click on the select the workflow we want to run, then click on run. So once you click on run, it will be showing in the middle panel. So in this case, if you have a new data set, you will change to the new data set. So for example, you know, I don't have a new data set or I can use the Fatty Groomer, just rerun the data I have. But this time by rerun what modified is I only modified the parameter for the trimmer. I modified from 10 to 11. So you can see, click on that, you see this already modified and um, so once this is set up, you can click on the, uh, you can say send the result to a new history, then we will send it to another history. So I say workflow, you see, and then click on the wrong workflow. So in this case, it will be automatically perform analysis step by step. So we don't need to wait to one program finish, submit a second one. This is all we need to submit once. So uh, does it make sense so far? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the workflow. Another thing is the under history. So we have our result here. So you see you finished 
whatever you want to achieve. Then you say, oh, I want my collaborator to see my result. Then how to do that? So the history can be shared uh, with the other. So under the history panel, select uh, history options. So under here, there's the selection called share or publish. So you click on that. So it will allow you to choose, um, make history acceptable through a link, or make history acceptable and publish. So if you click on this, it will be showing under the shared data. And uh, if you want to share with one user, if you know that the user is logging for our Galaxy, you can click on that and enter its login. And for example, if I say I wanted to share this history with everyone, so I just say make a history accessible and publish. So once I click on this, and then it will be showing on my shared data, published history. So you see this is the one I just shared like uh, 10 seconds ago. So I can say it, you can say it too. So this is about how to share the or publish the history. Okay, so this is the um, uh, and with the how do we um, publish uh, history, or uh, how do we build a, a workflow from the histories. So now we go to the, our next topic. So it's going to be the, our RNA-seq analysis. So similar as yesterday, so you can download our second day uh, slide from the published histories. Okay, so we have a uh, field picard step. So uh, do you want to run the picard? Okay, so the Okay, so the um, so the pick card is uh, uh, quite simple. So if you meet that, uh, let me uh, repeat uh, just one submission really quick. So uh, for the second day about uh, our RNC analysis, so click on the shared data, click on the published histories. There is a Galaxy Day 2 selection click on that so you can download uh, to your local computer okay so you got the uh, uh, Okay, so I think if you got an error from the uh, PCAT, so let me uh, show one more time about that. So the quite possible is the body, uh output is not sorted. So if you, you didn't modify the setting, and then the program will will be filled. So let's go to the P card. And uh, so under P card, select this SAM-BAM alignment matrix. 
So in here, the bottom, assume the input file is already sorted. So make sure you change from yes to no. And then on the top is make sure you choose the output sum from, from the bottom. Then that should solve the issue. Okay, so now let's go to the the RSI analysis part. So let me open my slide for a second day. Okay, so for Today we are going to try um, a pipeline for our sick differential analysis. So I also prepared for the um, marks the chip sec analysis. That may not be interest uh, to uh, everyone because I think uh, chip sec analysis is not um, it, it majority labs may not use that technology at all. Somehow, and uh, if you cannot see in RNC workflow, some uh, middle part, uh, somehow is, uh, I don't know what caused the issue, and uh, but uh, I prepare a second uh, simple one. So if you cannot see the top head, so what we are going to uh, practice today is this RNC workflow. So we basically, we have a paired sequence read. This is paired. So two brain and two for adrenal FASTQ files. So first thing we run FASTQ groomer on each of this four sequence read. Then we are going to run top height. So top height, is used uh, for the RN sequence, RN se se uh, the data analysis. So after we have the top height of output, and uh, we can run the PCAR alignment summary to see how good the mapping rate, uh, rate is. And uh, we also run the CAF links and CAF diff. So the CAF D4 is will give us the differential comparison result uh, be, between brain and the adrenal. So that's the goal of today. So let us go to the go back to here. So get a new create a new history is a uh, like uh, for today's, uh, so we can do the bring adrenal comparison. Okay, so this is uh, my new workflow. So from here, I'm going to copy the uh, the data to my new history so the i think uh you can follow your uh the based on the slide and um, there is a step by step instruction on the slide and uh, where is my galaxy tool okay then so okay so here it is and um so create a new history and then rename it in any name you like to give. Then copy the, so the GTF is the gene annotation. So because I use the really small data set for analysis, so we can see result really like within minutes. So uh, we have the gene annotation uh, from the only for chromosome 19. And uh, so this is the gene annotation table. We are going to use this for differential analysis. So we have four sequence read, two for brain, two for adrenal. 
So we first run groomer on each of those. We are not going to repeat the quality control. This is simply because the data are good. And uh, we skip that step because we know how to use it. And um, then we are going to try the top height on brain and the wrong top height separate on adrenal. Then we run calf diff to get the uh, gene expression differences between these two tissue. So let's uh, go back to here. So again, we are going to copy data set uh, from the from the from our workshop data set. So the source is again is our workshop data set. So destination history should be the one I just created. Go to here. So we copy mine is the gene annotation is in GTF format. So to bring bring one, bring two, and the two adrenal six and the seven. Then this is all we needed for RNSeq. So we copy, select on that. So after it is done, and then we will click on this. Then as you can see, we have four, um, four data, four sequence rate plus uh, gene annotation. So we are going to run Boomer on each of this sequence read. So, so this groomer again is just wanted to get the center format. So I'm going to submit a four. So one is the brain one to submission, then submit four times. The second one is my brain two. Submit, and then is uh, adrenal one. Submit, then okay. So because it's really, um, I forgot how many sequence rate are included into it. So groomer runs really fast. But uh, if you have the data set from facility with the meanings, so it, it will take a while to finish. So after this, uh, we are already groomed, so we are going to run the top height. So again, I'm going to type in keyword to find where it's located. So for Lumina, so still, and uh, this is paired and data, so we need to, to change the setting. So the first thing is the input file for FastAQ file. So we need to run two top height, one for brain, one for adrenal. So the first file I'm going to run for brain. So the brain one is my groomed data on the on the number six. So this is the case. Once you have a lot of data around the same process, it's pretty hard to, to choose. For example, this groomer is to, green, uh, to bring or adrenal. So the good habit you may want to add it. This to the <clears throat> to something is easy to recognize. For example, you can see the Bring one, so that's to help to choose the uh, the data and uh, what this data for. So for my case, uh, and um, my first one should be green one groomer. So I'm going to use the build in index, and uh, if it's not pre-configured in Galaxy, you won't be able to see in here. Just as I mentioned yesterday, 
if you want to see under selection, you need to let me know the genome you are going to work with. Then I can make them available. So I'm going to select HG19. So this is only brain one because the brain sample is paired end. So we need to change it from a single end to paired end. So it will let me choose the second pair. So second pair, it should be my data seven. And uh, I think my data seven is uh, for the brain two. Yeah. So after this, uh, I will do submission to get uh, submitted. So this is the first top head. I need to run it uh, again for the second data side. Second one should be for the uh, adrenal. So I will choose the top head again. So this one is the adrenal, it should be the, this one is my adrenal the one. So you see it's from the green to yellow now. So this will be go to the curing system and uh, it's got connected right away so we can get an update is running. And uh, then it's still change, make sure change to HG19. If we didn't modify the genome we use and uh, we won't get any alignment. So still again, and it should be paired and then I gave the second uh, uh, and of the adrenal should be my data nine, then run again. So, uh, so uh, anybody else able to submit a job? Yeah, that's good. And uh, um, we have, uh, I don't know how many jobs it can be, let me count. Uh, so each submission take a full computing call. So we have 196, so 196 times uh, divide to four is, uh, uh, how much it is? The, We should be able to run about 20 jobs, right? Yeah. So, so seems like my second job is still running. And um, so let's wait uh, a little bit to see the Okay, so uh, you have your uh, okay. So that's good. We may just need to wait in the queue to get a term. So if you are lucky to have both your brain and the adrenal finished, you can go ahead to run the uh, cuff link, uh, cuff if. And uh, if um, you still waiting, but you wanted to say the, what's the next step. And uh, so we have the pre run the result as under published history. And uh, so you can get that uh, to your to your history. So the result should be showing under RSEC diff history. So you click on this, click on it. Yeah, I think uh, the, the Hoffman network, and because we have multiple using Galaxy together, so we share the same network, so it, it takes time to bring up. So I'm going to switch to this history, so you can see what it looks like. So in here,
So in here, you see the after top head finish, and uh, each top head will give you one, two, three, four output. So each output uh, contains uh, different information. So accepted heat is in BAM format. So that's the alignment uh, nowadays either use SAM format or BAM. So top hat has the BAM as the output format. So this is the alignment result. So it contains the information each reader aligned to where in the genome. Then it also gave the splice junction information. So this is the top hat is for the RNA-seq analysis and for gene for gene information. So for the people, even you have the gene model, right? For the people may be interested in identify the new splicing site. So that is the place to go because the top head will identify and also give us the where is the potential junction site is. So the splicing junction is in bad format. So it will tell us uh, in this chromosome, we only have the 19. So in this chromosome 19, and uh, we have uh, a junction site start here and here, then give a name, then give a kind of information related with this junction. So if you are interested in splicing junction, information, you can come here to find out. But for our case, for the downstream to identify the differential uh, gene expression, we are interested in the, we are going to use the BAM files as input for the CAFD. So uh, I'm not sure whether anyone has both results. Let me switch back to my, uh, you know, you can, we can switch between the history to history. So current history is uh, I use the shared history. I want to change back to my today's uh, uh, the new history I just created. So you come to the saved history and then it will show up all the history we have. So I want to switch to the history I just created. So you can see from here, the yellow means I still have something wrong in it. Basically my top height I submitted for adrenal. So total data set I have none. So then I'm going to switch back to see how that's go. Then this one you see my top head for brain still running and the four is waiting. So it's still waiting. So now let's still use our whatever the the one we got from our published shared one. So that uh, we will continue to use that one and uh, uh, I think I will pull from here. I lost the track to that one. So, so go back to this uh, RN6. So we may be able to finish OZOPS, maybe not. It seems uh, like running slower than I thought. So. Okay, so if uh, you have your jobs uh, still running, so let's try to use IGV to visualize our alignment result. It's basically it's BAM. So that's kind of independent of the, our Galaxy service and with Hoffman. So how to do that? So let's the, go to this uh, RNA seq diff, diff uh, history. So in here, 
we have a top hat accepted heat in BAM format, right? One is for adrenal. So click on that one. So as you can see, there is a disk logo, click on that. So from here, you can see there is two selection. One is the download the data site. So this will download the BAM files for Adreno. And then another selection is download the BAM index. So we need to download both to the local computer. Then IGV can open them. So I first download data site. And then second time, I'm going to download index. Oh. Yeah, I think this is the, okay. So did I download both, I think? So the, okay, it's a hyphen term. So which one give you error? Let's see whether, oh yeah. So if the give the error, let's do this way. I think the, uh, I think if it happened to the index one, there might be some issue. So we can recreate the index. So how to do that? So click on this ID the attribute, click on that one. And then there is a convert format. So there is a format is from the BAM to BAI, then do conversion. And uh, then once you submit that, it will be shown on the top as a job. So once it's finished, it will give you the, give us the, the BI file we need. Then download that one to local, to your local computer. So repeat the same thing for the, for the brain. So now let me come. So I did for Adreno for accepted heat. So now let us go to the brain. So brain is the number 13. So click on the disk logo. First download the data site. So the brain may got the same issue, then choose the bring, choose the, where the bring the. Okay, here is the bring BAM files. Again, the convert to BAI, click on the pencil logo, and then convert the format. Uh, I think I choose the wrong one. Uh, this is the bad format. I need to choose the BAM. Here it is. Okay. Then can word format. So this will create the index for the BI is the index file for the for the BAM files. So after it's finished, it will be showing on the top and then download this to local computer. So once uh, you download both BAM and the BAI file to your local computer, then we can use the IGV to open it. So now let's go to my IGV. So let's see the how many jobs is running. Let me check the backend. Uh, Yeah, so if you download both 
and uh, open your IGV from your lo local computer now. Uh, yeah, we have one top head is running, one is uh, waiting for the cup div, I think. Yeah, so let me see the, is that the something? Yeah, mine is still running, I think. Yeah, uh, then we have uh, someone is submitted the cuff give, that is good. Yeah, okay. So it seems like uh, you either finished uh, your top head or you used uh, per created uh, history, that's uh, all okay. So, so now let us open the IGV view to visualize. So where is my IGV? So here is the IGV, click on the IGV. So anybody used the IGV before? Okay, so um, if you use the IGV before, it's uh, probably you just uh, work on your own now. If not, and the uh, IGV is uh, pretty simple basically to use, but it's a useful tool to visualize the alignment result, uh, to visualize uh, for the SNP um, mutation information and um, also the gene model information. So first thing after we open, the default is go to the HG38 because uh, our alignment is uh, on the HG19. So we switch to HG19. So it will load, once we switch, it will load HG19 to here. And also because uh, we use the chromosome 19 and uh, for our gene model information. So I will change to HG19. So then it's, uh, we are going to load the adrenal alignment result and the brain alignment result. So we already downloaded them to the, my, to the local computer. So I'm going to load from file. So I know it's, it's loaded to my download folder. So I will go there. So uh, as you can see, the first one I have, uh, I think 17 is my adrenal result. I'm going to open it. So as you see here, it gave me the uh, error message. So what does it mean? So basically the, for IGV to work with BAM files, we need um, BM file, we also need the index BAI. But then these two files have to be under the same name. So if a name doesn't match, so IGV won't recognize that. So it happened for my case, I'm going to rename it. So this is uh, good to know. Otherwise, if you are first, you are new to IGV, you may feel something not right, but basically it's right, just because the name is uh, not match the requirement. So I'm going to rename my BAM file, this uh, Galaxy 17 to Adreno. Oh. 
yeah, I already have the name. Okay, so the meantime, as I mentioned, the, the, the index file have to match the, the BAM file name. So I'm going to rename this one too. Okay, so now let me try to load it to see whether it can work. So. Yeah, you see this time uh, it uh, works uh, a while. So at the beginning, we won't be able to say anything and um, because we have to zoom to some reason because we use limited sequence read. So we need to locate where has the information. So let me, so if you already have the, uh, CAFDIF output. So I think the CAFDIF will show in, will show the significant difference uh, for Jin um, between adrenal and the brain. Uh, I will go back here later, but let's find the location. I think the chromosome 19 and the uh, under chromosome 19, let's type in here. Under 31, 78. Um, Okay, I will go here. So in here we have kind of the alignment because we use a really small data set. So we want to have alignment across the whole genome. So we only have a kind of specific region with the alignment rate. So once you have this, so the coverage is basically is the sum of each location of the read aligned. So if you have more read showing in here, the peak is higher. And uh, so we have a kind of expression for adrenal in here. So now let us load the brain to here because this is the area shows the difference for this gene between adrenal and the brain. So we want to see whether we can visualize by IGV, see whether here has more value than another sample. So I'm going to rename my brain to make a name match so I can load. So let's go to the download again. So this is my, my brain. So just to make sure the, the, the file name should be identical for the BAM and the, its index. Otherwise the IGV won't detect these two files together. So once it's the same name, then we can load in IGV. So, uh, as you can see in here, so the one is the peak value in here is uh, uh, we can change the, the height of uh, each track. So let's make a larger. Okay, so we can also modify the data range. So this is one to 
160 and we change to 200 just um, make them the same scale so it's easy to tell and uh, the difference so we change the height then we change it here to the scale to the data range to the same range so as you can see it seems like adrenal in this region has more expression than the brain so that's the for the for the visualization and uh, to examine uh, of our comparison uh, result uh, using IGV. So you basically can use the IGV for a number of things. And um, you can play around it because it's just a local desktop software. And, uh, and the people sometimes use this as a creator figure for publication. So we are not going through the uh, chip sack but the chipset result published in, uh, in the manuscript uh, for MACS program is basically the screenshot from, uh, from the IT. Can I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead. You can do this by chromosome by chromosome, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see on the top, uh, yeah. you first choose the genome we are working on then choose the chromosome we are interested. So we and, can and, do it by chromosome by chromosome. We can we can use the same data because the data is same. Yeah. So we can go keep on changing from one chromosome to other chromosome. Yeah, you can do that. But uh, we probably don't have the the data aligned to the other chromosome because we have a really small data set. I see. Okay, so you yeah. already know you know ahead of time that the data is is aligned to the chromosome uh, number, chromosome nineteen. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, our because we try to limit the time to run yes. the program. So, but in case, but but part for uh, uh, RNA sequence analysis, not knowing uh, the where the uh, differences are. We'll have to do it by chromosome by chromosome? Uh, no, it's basically we will know where it is. But uh, after you run the differential analysis, yes, it, okay. it will tell us uh, where it contains the significance regulated gene. Okay, yes. Yeah. yes thank you. But yeah. based on that, we want to visualize results. We come to IGV and yes. then type in the gene name. So for me, uh, let me go back. I think that there is one gene name called S1PR4 and the showing significant difference between brain and the uh, adrenal. So I type in manually the location, but basically IGV allow us uh, uh, to do is the, to type in the gene name. Then you do go it will be automatically bring to this gene location. As you can see, once I type in the gene name, it's showing up in the bottom. Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. makes sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. so, so, okay. So now let us go back to the, where we locate the region interested. So let's go back to our, to our, Galaxy interface. So, and uh, we have the, right now I have the top head finished. So I can submit for the CAFD for uh, analysis. And, um, but if you didn't run your own, I will be back to RNCD for history. And uh, so, in CAFD, and uh, we need to give the gene annotation because we are interested only in the gene differences. So we give the gene model. This uh, we already uploaded either from the UCSC website like we tried yesterday 
or we have our own in GTF format. So the by default, <coughs> CuffDiff will run the between two samples. But if you have more than two samples, like a three sample, so the default they perform a replicate analysis. Default is no, it basically only use two sample. But if you have more than two, you select yes. So it will allow you to add more group for comparison. But for our case, we don't need, we only have two group. So the first one is our, uh, I think the first one 17 is my adrenal. So I will change 17 to 13 is my brain. So I will compare these two based on the alignment uh, result. Then I will do the differential analysis. Then I do the click. So now I submitted the job is waiting to get wrong and the finish. So let's go back to our pre round the result. It should be the same as we did now. So let's switch to this one. And um, so once we finish the cuff diff, the cuff diff will give a number of results. So cuff diff, what does it give is, uh, as you can see, I think it gave eight result. So cuff diff gave result based on the comparison by CDS, by gene, by transcript. So if you are not interested in CDS comparison, like each coding reason comparison, then you can go say the for gene expression. So the cuff diff also gave the around the transcription starting site differential expression result if your goal is for study of TSS. But I think in most cases, people just interested in gene differential testing, right? So in the cuff diff output, there is one output called the gene differential expression testing. Then we click on that. So this one, uh, we can download to, it's tabular. We can download to local computer and open in Excel. So this is just a simple text file. So as you can see, so based on the gene differential, it gave the test ID. It basically is our gene name. Then tell us where this gene located. Then in the end, and uh, will tell us the significance. So because we have really, really small data set, so majority of them just know. So if it's no, it's, um, it's showing no significance. But if you scroll down or you just load, um, save to your local computer, then you will see there is one gene showing as yes. So um, won't be able to show in here, but it's better to download to local computer, then open in Excel. So once you open in Excel, it should be similar as shown in my slide. So I download it into my local computer. So I go to my download place. So this is the tabular I just download and uh, then I can open using the other, it should be Excel. So let me choose uh, Excel to open it. Uh, where is, yeah, here is my Excel. Okay. So now I open by Excel. So you can search by the significance, say is there any labeled as uh, yes, and um, okay. 
So then you will locate this the so this is pretty much the only gene showing significance based on our small data set. So from here you know what gene is its location, then the significance. So the that's the CAFDF uh, result uh, gave to us. So so it uh, makes sense. So once you have that, you come to IGV to see why it's showing like it's so different. But uh, from the company, you see so many alignment. Of course, it's significant by expression. Yeah, it makes sense so far. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the I think. Uh, that's pretty much we cover for today. And uh, so if you, I think now of you shows the interest uh, for the chip, uh, chip sack, right? Is the, the goal is the no matter what you work on, uh, you, you cannot open in Excel. And uh, I think the, it can be opened. Uh, so the, uh, so, you can try, I think, uh, let me come back. So, okay, so I'm going to close this one. So if you go to the Excel, say the open, then you go to the location of that one, see whether it can be work. It's in my download site. Okay, then the, in here, and uh, you need to change your old files. Okay, so once you change to old files, then you can open it. Then you use the, because it's type delimited, you open it. yeah. Okay, so the another question is, uh, I miss work. Okay, so workflow part, is, uh, uh, for example, when we run the quality, so we did the quality control, we, we did the groomer. From the groomer, next step, we did the quality control. So after quality control, uh, we did the trimmer. And then from there, we did the alignment. So this is only for one data site. But in most uh, cases, when you receive the sequence read from facility, you probably got many, like 10, 20, 30. So you don't want to run each data set through this seven or eight step. So all we need is just use one data set, go through this set seven step. Then from this seven step, we build up a workflow. Mm -hmm. So that workflow is kind of like a function, like one program, mm -hmm. automatically take care of this seven step. It makes sense? Yes, yes. Okay, so, so it's, it, it's, it's like so a pipeline, yeah. It's just a... Um, you use it as a, like a protocol, and then the, and then put every sample is just use the same protocol to do the same procedure. E exactly. Okay. Yeah, but the first time you need to build up this okay. protocol. Okay. And then you, you. Re you repeat the protocol, just click once, not mm -hmm. seven times anymore. Okay, got it. Thank you. Yeah. Dr. Yan, I have to go, okay. but can I bother you a few more times? I don't think I'll be able to do it on my own, at least for the first time. But can, okay. we, can I Always. bother you? Yeah, no problem. Just email me. Okay. Yeah, you, you have my email, right? Yes, I have your email. Okay, yes. that's good. Yeah, feel free to contact me. Always. Thank you. Thank, thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Yeah. So, 
And uh, for others, uh, I'm going to post the, the quiz here. And uh, so the uh, finish quiz before you leave. And uh, also, if you take this uh, for credit, for course credit, either as a undergraduate or graduate, and uh, I'm going to email you the homework. So homework, you can finish anytime, and then some, after you finish, maybe this weekend or next week, then send me whatever you are done with the homework. So I'm going to post um, the link for the quiz. Um, Dr. Yan, I still can't get it to open on Excel. It looks like different on my computer, so I don't know. What to and do. um, you want to share your screen with me? Yeah. yeah. Okay, let me stop mine. Um, so like, it's it, this is what the file I renamed it. This is what it's called. But um, when I press open, it doesn't give me the what you have like my. my uh, how about the options? Yeah, it just does that. Like, I guess it looks different on a. I don't know. And uh, uh, it it's in what Excel and the package you use. Um, I, don't, I think it's the most recent one. Or let me just. Okay. Uh, another way to do. Uh, can you go to the uh, the location of the file? Yeah. And right click on that, uh, open this, and then select the other. Yeah, I can't. I can't like so. So, I tried looking for it too, and it won't let me choose it. Like oh, then the recommended select uh, uh, all application. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay, all right. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. Now it's open. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, I think the another thing is the um, uh, Aloy mentioned. Uh, there is an evaluation form. So, and if you receive the link from an ally about the evaluation, um, please fill it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, sure. Yeah. 